Hello and welcome back to the next part in our series of videos where I show you how to set up your Asus Dawn NAS right the very first time. And today we're going to talk about the eggy, tricksy, difficult and arguably dangerous subject of remote access. In our previous video, in part 6 of this series, we talked about securing your Asus Dawn NAS, adding as many layers of protection as possible, adding safeguards, adding notifications, provisions and ultimately allowing you to minimize attack vectors. Now, as mentioned in that video, we separated this particular subject into two videos. We did it because arguably there are two sides, two sides to this coin. The Asus Storm NAS not only needs to withstand all of this uh, attacks that could potentially happen, but also you need to know they will happen in order for you to you know, be proactive and do something about it. Unlike when a system is on a pure LAN environment where there is no external access, it actually minimizes those attack vectors substantially because you are limited to the client devices in your local area network. However, Ex allowing external access to any degree doesn't just add one or two attack vectors, but each one of the attack vectors that your LAN had, the entire selection of attack vectors that a LAN-only NAS has just on the local area network can be applied to every single remote access you apply, multiplying attack vectors substantially. So it's under you need to understand what you're doing and the dangers. But the first part of this video is going to be what I would call easy mode. It's going to be going through the simplest ways to allow remote access to your system. Generally, these will also result in the lowest performance, but these are the ones that the less tech heady of you can do. The other half of this video is going to be the more tech heavy stuff that comes with an element of risk. So please, please, please keep that in mind and also please have watched the entirety of part six prior to this because all of the steps we're going to follow aren't really going to touch on robustly securing your NAS in the first place because we're going to assume you've already done that. And also at parts during this video I'm almost certainly going to reveal my public IP. Don't worry, one, we're using a disposable SIM card router that means this IP is a junker and secondly even though I'm out of just due diligence going to try and block it out even if it does leak through it will change relatively soon anyway so even when we do junk this little 30 day sim it's not really going to matter and chances are there is no way this video is going to be live uh, within the next two to three months anyway it's the 23rd of Feb anyway let's carry on so um, the first and easiest you're almost certainly going to already identify is using Asus Store's own services. Asus Store's own services, otherwise known as Easy Connect, we touched on it in a previous video. There are actually client tools available from Asus Store that you can install on systems to allow that connection to be a little easier. And if you want to sign up to it, you do need to register for an Asus Store account. It's completely free. You can do it once you get your device. It's a completely free account. And you use the NAS as something of a relay service. So unlike... Uh, arguably a more dangerous access like this one where you would have a local system far away directly going through your router and into the Asus Store NAS. These relay points will allow you, let's find the right image there, uh, to access the system utilizing Asus Store's own platform. That is that you are accessing the NAS bouncing through Asus Store as a verification server and also pass through to get to the NAS. Now again, that's an incredibly caveman way to put it, but that is the best way I can describe and keeping it in the easy mode section of this video. Now, when you set that up, after you've registered, you go into the Easy Connection, you then log in to the system, select Easy Connect Service and click Apply. From that, the NAS will then start bouncing off, uh, going with the uh, domain naming service, DNS, that the system has to allow that remote connection. However, it is worth touching on that your NAS, much like devices on the network, we mentioned earlier on in this series about dynamic and static IPs, your internet connection is almost certainly dynamic. Unless you've paid a little bit more bunts in order to allow your um, network, uh, your public IP, your internet IP, if you will, um, to be static, which would cost you more, chances are it's going to be dynamic. Because I think there are 4 million different variations um, of that potential code, or 4 billion. So with that in mind, although we have established a remote access connection, it is worth us touching very, very briefly on the subject of DDNS, Dynamic uh, Domain Naming Service Protocol. 
Using the ASA store service, we can see there's our cloud ID and indeed it utilizes the existing cloud ID to create that connection there. So for example, I've copied it, we can open it up in a brand new tab and now it's gonna establish that connection off of the ASA store uh, relay server there and you can see that it's letting us know where our NAS is. So we can continue onwards to the Easy Connect service, but as you can see, it's also found that I'm still on the LAN. So it can go ahead and when you're utilizing some of the synchronization client apps, this is how the system, uh, the NAS and indeed your client device can sometimes hop between external access and internal network access without you even knowing, which is really great to see, which means you get the best performance possible within your own personal setup there. But you're still gonna need security credentials. And as mentioned previously in the video, get your IP and alert protocol in place, get your security credentials and your um, permissions all sorted out accordingly and make sure that admin account and SSH are disabled like an absolute bullet if they're not already disabled by default, which they should be. But if you want to enable uh, that DDNS system, let's go into manual connect here. So as you can see under the DDNS tab here, we've already got the um, identity of the cloud ID we've created there, but we might want to create that dynamic one. Now we've already locked in at the ASA store um, domain usage here, but you can use third party ones if you already have some in place. Remember, this will change the prefix of that URL, but it also means that you can give your system a much more unique name, which definitely rather than uh, that model ID, which is probably not too hidden, you can go ahead and change it to something a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more hidden overall. So as you're establishing these remote connections, and I should have mentioned at the start of the video, not all the steps that we go through today are in chronological order. They will apply to your own setup and what you've done thus far. It's worth remembering that creating the remote access, if you're not going to be utilizing a relay portal and you're gonna go for something direct, or you're gonna be utilizing the ASUS store NAS as um, a VPN server, then you're going to have to start configuring and changing the ports on your route. You're gonna to have to be opening those up. now. It's, you know, I should highlight that Acer Store do provide their own router, a router configuration service where it will set up your router automatically using the NAS and push these things. Now, I don't recommend you do that because it is easy and it will make things very, very easy to do. But if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be using tools like this in the first place. And it is highly, highly recommended that you go hands on with your router and change a lot of those settings yourself if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, do not start opening ports. Now, when it comes to opening ports, there's two ways to look at it on the system. One, if you're going to be um, opening up things for say a VPN service. So for example, if we go into the app center here and we open up the VPN server, the VPN server on an Asus door system allows you to access the NAS remotely from any um, internet service in the world and then assume the identity of uh, access to it like you're in the local bubble. Now that's an oversimplification, but it is still very much the case. You can have multiple users coming in, interacting with the NAS as if they themselves are local. Bear in mind, that's not the same as using a typical public VPN service where you might access a VPN on your mobile phone when you're out and about to access a website and not be tracked. What this will do is disguise your access into the system, but what you do within the system and its own internet service, if that's not behind its own VPN, which by the way will make your transfers even harder, could also mean that that progress and what you are doing there will be tracked. Now, if you're going to be utilizing, for example, OpenVPN, um, again, we're not going to use point to point uh, VPN services there. You can use OpenVPN, and OpenVPN will allow you to create that VPN service and therefore assign that to a specific port. By default, uh, Acer Store will apply uh, preset values there. So you've got uh, the IP address there, 10.0.1.0. And again, it's the full spectrum of the 255 entrances in that public, in that spectrum. On top of that, the port there is 1194. I recommend you change that. That is the default. But again, I recommend you change it. And once you've got that there, the number of connected users at any time, whether you want to change it to a different DNS server and but there's your options really that you want to go through that one. After that, you want to download the configuration file there for OpenVPN. Once you've downloaded that configuration file for OpenVPN, go into the desktop settings there, find the file that you've downloaded. I presume Google is stopping me uh, keeping it. Go back in, it's downloaded, OpenVPN one, extract it into a new file, go into, uh, sorry, the folder you have created and 
you can go in and view that in there as you can see it's given us our open server um, identity there what we need to do is to enter into there the name that we've given our server there via the DNS you enter that and then save those details in that file once you've saved that information in that specific file you need to head into uh, the OpenVPN site download one of the client tools Mac OS Windows Android whatever install that application and then use the details in that config file to create that connection between the two and if you want to stay on top of who's got access to this and to what level you can change credentials for users and indeed groups to make sure that levels of access is afforded to these to the right degree so you've got two schools of thought one you can say only a serious admin user can utilize this service for troubleshooting and monitoring or if you're concerned that the user access you're going to be given to remote access is too powerful you can ensure that only low level client level busy bod people have got access to this but a serious admin user that wants to have admin control needs to be local with the system there's two schools of thought pick the one that goes for your own setup also it never hurts to make sure you've got an up-to-date certificate on your system and indeed some remote access protocol definitely definitely requires it aces all do install their own certificate there for their own services which are utilized and you can if you choose go ahead and create a brand new one and you can utilize things like let's encrypt to get brand new ones if you pick let's encrypt certificates are completely for free you can download it's registered you'll have one very very quickly but bear in mind if you do go ahead with a let's encrypt certificate that if by using it you are going to redirect some services that may be utilizing the existing certificate there so keep that in mind but ultimately uh, um, an encrypted certificate will allow it to check that connected services remotely either way are safe to transmit data even tiny tiny data and that's another reason why a lot of users will tend to use one of those relay services or even Acer Store's own because they themselves reinforce that certif um, certificate for utilization of transferring of that data securely then of course we come back to that subject of port forwarding there where you may want to play around with your settings and of course we got to talk about firewalls so if you go into the settings menu you can head into the ADM Defender and there is the firewall option remember if you're going to be using ddns services and those remote access ports I'm quickly circling back to if you're going to be utilizing the system as a vpn as an access point going out or even if you're going to be allowing direct level access as mentioned earlier on um, it is worth highlighting that you need 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 to go into the firewall and make some openings there it's not just about opening up the port on a router again don't do it if you don't know what you're doing head into the firewall uh, via the adm defender click add enter the name of this rule that we're going to be creating here so vpn port from there you can go ahead and create the ip address that is going to be utilized or you can use pre-selective and specific port and openings that need to be created from built-in services that you've installed so again with the vpn server go ahead and that will create that in there and you can open up that port if need be on the router uh, on not on the router on the firewall i should say or also you can deny those services if need be depending on what you need and if all of this feels too damn dangerous i recommend more than any other service and i say this to a lot of the people that contact us free advice uh, the zoom calls or here on youtube i cannot recommend utilizing tail scale enough tail scale honestly is one of the best portal access points as a vpn i've ever used again they're not sponsoring this video they've never paid us a penny but i love using it unlike a normal vpn that would allow you to you go via a vpn portal such as utilizing again nord and stuff like that where you would go through and then you know maintain that anonymity which is good you do have a drop in performance Towscale allows you to create vpn tunnels between lots of different devices it's a free service that you can utilize download and install the client on each individual device you intend to have them communicate together and then rather rather than creating publicly identifiable dns identities that can be googled and found online opening up an attack vector at least with Towscale, you are creating these portal points where only that way in is verifiable and alongside the levels of security encryption two-step verification and identity verification that is built into the acer store platform you then have layered layered on top Towscale's verification device identity and more all of which can be managed from that single portal interface on a mobile phone but that has been how to access your Acer Store NAS remotely. I cannot stress enough, 
don't go opening port, uh, ports on your system or your router if you don't know what you're doing. Utilize Acerdor's own service or utilize Tower Scout or even things like TeamViewer if you use the, I believe, third party APK. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Use our free advice section if you need it. Again, free advice section are right inside of every single page on NAS Compares. Utilize our community forum or in the free advice section you can find not only our Discord, but recommended first and third party support platforms as well as subreddits. If three to five working days is too long to get free support from me and Eddie, then go ahead and use the Expediated service or head over to Ko-Fi for one hour Zoom consultations or join the membership program to get regular Expediated support, access to videos early, and exclusive content and our monthly Zoom. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.